Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. Just, just scanning it in for my July design team project for Witchcraft Do You Do? Yes, today is like the 29th or 30th or something like that. And, but I'm there, I made it. All right. <laughs> so this weekend is a weekend of catch up. Once I'm finished, if anyone wants to come and clean my desk, that would be awesome. Right, what I want to talk about today is, apart from their kits, their freebies. For those of you that haven't been into the website before and had a look at all their digitals, they have freebies in there as well. Now, freebies are good on their own, or they're also awesome for two reasons. One, they're good um, complementary ones that'll go with your kits. So they will add extras to your kits, or they're a starting base for a kit. And that's what we're going to do today. So the kit that I'm using is Vintage Bits and Pieces Set 2. Another one of those ones that's right up my alley. So have we got the full shot there? Yes. So we've got envelopes, of course. Oh, this is probably in no order whatsoever. We have frames. We have tags that will fold over and give you tabs or little pockets. We have, what are they called, tags. <laughs> we have words, which is always handy because we can never have enough words. So some of these I've printed in copy paper, some I've printed in the presentation paper to make them a bit thicker. We have a little bit of colour going on in borders. One of the bigger versions of the envelopes. We have our numbers and our dates and all of those in lots of different colours. There's a couple I haven't printed out. Um, because they have so many wonderful colours with the kits for witchcraft do you do and they give you options, you can tend to pick and choose what it is you'd like to print out. So you don't have to print out the entire lot. You've got many people. You know, this kit has got so many goodies in it. So you've got them in this smaller version. I've got two copies of that there. Um, more numbers, dates, same sort of ones, but this time larger version and in landscape. Oh, that's those envelopes again. So I told you there was no rhyme or reason to how I've done this. That's those again. That's those again. Hang on a moment. Um, that's the tags where I've printed them out in a smaller version to use on this. There's the words where I've printed them out on coffee dyed paper so that I can get them. So if we have a look back here, words, 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 words. Right. So I printed them out in that and then I was just going to go over them with a distress ink. And then I thought, hang on a moment. So I've printed them out on my coffee dyed, coffee dyed paper to give me these beautiful bits where it's a little bit different, a little bit blotchy and all the rest. There's those coloured ones again that I've printed out on coffee dyed paper. That's what I want to use today because I wanted to tone down the colouring for them. Oh, don't get me wrong, I love the colouring, but for me I needed to tone down the colouring and get rid of a lot of that white. So for me, I'll just run them through my printer in the coffee dyed version. So there it is in the pink, there it is in the mauve. And pop those aside because I'm using those ones. Here we have our people again, but larger versions. Okay, great for cutting out and all the rest. So I've cut one out for this next one that I'm doing and one has already been cut out for him. And there they are in those. And again, I've printed those out on the presentation paper to make them a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to sit all this to the side. Now, the freebie that I want to use to go with this kit. Ah, see, there's my lady for this one, which is my nurse. I'm going to just sit that one to the side over there. The freebie that I'm cutting out is Botanical identification cards set one now this is a freebie two sheets we have all this and we have a file folder so i've already cut that one out just to save a little bit of time now you can do this any way shape or form that you want fold it any way that you want 
cut it in half and just have two with a pocket like um, something like that where you've got a pocket in there as well um, I've glued them together to make it a little bit more sturdy but what I want to do today with it is this so yes if that's in the pocket of your journal sitting in like that it just looks like a normal file file folder we undo our little paper clip and what we've got when we undo it is somebody's purse or wallet so we have under some acetate we've got their name in here slide you back in got a little notepad in here in the first section I've got all the you know the photos that you tend to carry now must admit these are off another one of their kits which is vintage people set two and it's just all photos if you ever need photos there's your kit there's your go-to kit they come in the black and whites but they also come in other colors as well but they will give you every photo you've ever required to complete a project so we've got because it's this guy so these are you know another one where he was looking pretty good this is his mother and father. These are the boys down at the club. And these are his workmates. That's my story for them. So we've got our photos. They go in here, so they're nice and close to us. And behind, we've got our money. Now I've just got some um, game board money that I love, just vintage game board. And I've popped those in, so they're a original ephemera pieces and on the other side of our wallet we've got on this side we've got some tickets you know because oh he could have been anywhere and in our last pocket again we've got some original ephemera but if you look in all the witchcraft you do kits you'll find ones with notes with letters with receipts things like that so if you don't have any original ephemera don't worry have a look at the kits. And so in the back, I've got um, a bank statement from, I don't know, when's this one from? I grabbed one out. 1938. Yes, no, it doesn't exist. It doesn't really go with him, but it was, it was just something that I wanted to have in there so that it folded thick and sat in there and sat out. So this is what we're going to do today. So here's our file folder. I'll move these ones aside and what we're going to do with this is we're going to fold on these lines okay so this line will be folded this line I'm actually going to cut off there's a reason for that okay because what I want to do is I want to back them so that when you look inside the pockets they're not just plain white now I could have printed this out on coffee coffee dyed paper or printed it um, double-sided and it would have alleviated that completely. But because I didn't, saves a little bit of ink, we're going to do this, all right? There is a method to my madness. So now we're going to just fold this up so that it's on that fold line, evenly bordered with that. Give that a little bit of a crease. Go down to this side, make sure you've got exactly the same thing. So on that fold line, up to here, so that it all matches, give that a crease, and then you should be able to just hold them together and crease them down, okay? Give them a bit of a push with your bone scorer or something like that. That's generally your wallet, okay? But we want other pages in, other pages, other pockets in there. So this is what we've got. This is what we're going to slot in here, okay? So that this is still the inside of our folded folio. But if I've got this like so, okay, I've still got this backing and I don't want this backing. I also don't want this piece to go all the way. I'm going to turn it around so that those corners are up the same way. I don't want this to go all the way down to the bottom because I don't want too much bulk sitting in here. So we're going to just trim off a little bit of that so that it's not the full length. It doesn't have to be the full length. 
Oh, I'm trimming off. I don't know. What's that? Quarter of an inch, bit over quarter of an inch, centimetre, something like that. Just a strip. So that when it goes back in here, it doesn't take up the bulk of down there. And they don't need to come all the way down to the bottom. Okay? But what we do need to do is get rid of this white section. So... If I fold this in half where it's going to go now, match all this up. Again, I don't want to create too much bulk. So what I'm going to do, so that gives me my score line down here. And what I'm going to do so that you can see where that score line is, I'm just going to rub that in like so. Okay, so you can see where that center score line is. And I'm going to use my lovely colours of these. And I'm going to adhere these bits onto it. All right. So start with, we're just going to separate those ones. This one really only needs to go down to, oh no, I might as well take it down to that bit. There's that one. Just so I can get an idea. And I want this one at there because I don't want that black line at the top of my file folder. Should have torn that the opposite way. Okay, so that this will adhere right up to that. And that's what you'll see on the other side of your file folder. So I'm going to take this bit off as well. Like so. So that's going to adhere up to there like that. Now, I don't want it, if I could come back in, I don't want it right up to this seam. If I put it right up to this seam or continue it all the way along, it's going to create a lot of bulk in there and it's going to make it want to thicken up even more and it means that I won't be able to put as much ephemera in that I want to. So what I'm going to do is just take that. So that's nice and even there. I'm going to take it just a little bit in okay and we will trim that bit off just there i'm not even going to use my knife we'll just tear so much easier all right so this one to start with is going to get adhered onto that like there okay so we'll grab our sticky thing our book page would be a sticky thing. All right, so I've come to about there, straight down there. All right, move that one back over there. This one is going to go on here like so, up against the edge, but all the way to the top of my file. Right, straight across like that. Give that a bit of a push. We're going to wait for that glue to dry before, of course, we fold it all over. But we can trim it up now. A pair of scissors to trim with. And we'll just follow that round like so. Don't worry if you're a little bit off it because that's what inking is all about, okay? And straighten it up with your inking, stuff like that. And that one. And I'm making sure I put the curve in this one and on the other end, because that will then give me my guide for trimming the rest of them. Straight down. All right, so there's one side. We're going to use our purple one for the other side. So we're going to do exactly the same thing down here. And across there without that black line. I don't want that black line sitting at the top of my 
file folder tab and we'll take both of those ones off go the other way so it's nice and easy hang on hang on let's have a look where are we there so if i take this end off then i can trim that bit with it sit that in there like so right so we're going to do exactly the same with this one no we're not we're going that way aren't we i knew that and you all saw it as well didn't you right so back with our book it's exactly the same thing as we just did down there down along that because we don't need them to go all the way down. You don't see all the way down. So all you're doing is creating unnecessary bulk. And using up excess paper. Because none of us have enough paper, do we? All right. That's going to go to the top of that. That's going to come over to about there. Like so. Up to that bit and down. Yeah, I did leave that bit in, didn't I? Oh, well. Right. Trim around that one. So I'm trying to rush. That's because I had this idea last night. And I've just only just finished my prototype because I've been doing everything else as well and um, then I realized what the time actually was so now I'm rushing down there down along there right so there's our two ends so that when this is in that's what you'll see when it's folded, okay? So when it opens up, that's what you'll see on the inside of your wallet. So our other piece, which is this one, is going to go in here and be attached in. But again, we're going to need something on this side, aren't we? Because otherwise you'll see it when it opens. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on here. We're going to fold this one so that we can see where our folded line is. Try and keep it straight. Take that out. Run that down there so that you can see where that line is. Okay. And we're going at the top because it's going that way. All right. So once again, we'll do the same thing and I'll take that off there. But again, I don't want that black line right at the top. So I'm going to trim that bit off over to the back line. Right. So this one will go in there. I'll take that one off. That'll go down there like so. We can trim the rest off. Are we the right way up? Yes, we are. So once again, see where we've got all this um, glue that's already all over it. Be about that, I reckon. Let's have a look. Make sure I'm up the right way. Straight onto there. Up to there. Give that a good push. I glued way too much. Didn't need anywhere near that much, did I? Right. Trim that bit off. Go that way. And then I can see it. Right. Why don't these make lovely collages? Same with the other side. So I'm just going to take this 
straight off from there and have it upside down. It's not really going to make that much difference. But this time it's a female's wallet. So it's my nurse. It's her wallet or her purse that she uses. So it'll be filled with her stuff. So we need a little bit of femininity in it. This one's going to go in here like so. In there like that. So we're about there this time. I might just get rid of that bit. And straight on the floor, because that's what the floor is like. Right. So yes, so this weekend is my catch-up weekend in everything craft related. I'd like to say housework related as well, but um, you know, no, 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 that's not going to happen. The only bit of housework I'll be getting done, I reckon, this weekend. I have done the groceries and I've done two loads of washing, but they're necessities. <laughs> Um, I reckon, I'm hoping the main bit of housework I get done will be finding my desk again. Oh, it's just, it's so, 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 so needs a clean up. Right, back to this one. We've got this one in here, this one in here, so that now we have the inside of those. This one's going to fold up there and we need an inside to take away from that as well. Okay, so once again, just give this a wipe so that you can see where it is. This is gonna go up this way. So I might just use that one and that one. This is a great one for doing that. So again, I don't want the white, the Black line, but um, this one's a non-directional one, isn't it? How about we use that one? Because that way could go that way or that way, couldn't it? All right. So we'll take off the black line. And then we'll trim it to the bottom of that one. Right, so that one's going to go up into that. Like so, straight in there. And I'm not worried that I've not got purple all through one side and pink all through the other side, okay? I just thought I'd better let that know be known that I'm just doing them. I'm not overly concerned. I'm amazed that I'm using colours anyway. Aren't you all amazed I'm using colours? Because I normally don't, do I? Right. There's that one. And we need the opposite version, which is that one, for this. It's alright, it'll all make sense in a moment. And I don't want the black line. But I do like this in the coffee coloured um, card stock. Paper weight. Paper stock. <laughs> Doing well. That one's going to go in there. Trim that down there. And then this one will go straight there like that. Right. There we go. Last little bit of this. All right, up to the top, leaving a bit of a gap. Like that one. I'll just smooth it out. Swish all that glue in. And then we will trim that bit off as well. 
All right, so now we can start to put this together. We've got rid of all our white edges. Okay, so there are no more white sections at the top anywhere. So we've got this one, we've got this one, and we've got this one. So if you can see now, when this goes in, we've got all these pockets, but they've got all these lovely colours going in there. What I did with my other one, so that I didn't get the bulk, as I said, I've then just gone in and covered that white with my brown Distress Ink. Now, I've used a darker ink, of course. With this one, it makes no difference which ink it is. It just takes a little way, a little bit of that white. It is going to be glued down here as well, but it just takes a little bit more away. That is me because I don't work in whites. If you work in whites, you don't have to do half of these steps. All right, this one's here. This one's going to go up there. I need to trim off that little section now. Like that. And what I do need to do, because I've not put thumb holes in any of these, because I wanted it to undo like a purse or a wallet, um, but I do need to just ink across there where I've got that white edge. So just straight down there. It just takes away... That white edge, not really going to make any difference on the sides. Across the top as well in here. Like so. Just haphazard. Right. I haven't looked at the time. I didn't even look at the time before I started. How are we going? Oh, 26 minutes. I'm impressed with myself. All right. Same with this one, because this will go up. Oh, haven't trimmed those edges off yet either. So we'll trim those rounds off now. That one. And that one, kind of. All right. And what have I missed? A little bit mucky there so we'll put a little bit of ink on that one this one's looking pretty good as i said ink covers a multitude of sins right happy with that oh no one moment i've just dropped it on the floor got to get rid of the microphone otherwise i'll kill myself check myself oh got it Put you back on. Sorry if that's making lots of noise. There we go. Right. So this one goes in here like so. So now we'll use our normal glue. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue down here, down here, and down there. Okay. Don't, I'm not gluing the bottom. The bottom, you'll notice, is not as far down. Anyway, if you want to make a smaller pocket, by all means, glue the bottom. But I haven't glued the bottom so that they're all just the same in the bottom anyway. Um, the amount of my wallets that are, you know, just that single loose piece across the bottom means that it's obviously a done thing anyway. So that's up to you if you want to put glue across the bottom of this one. Right. So matching that one up. Match your sides up. Match your top and your bottom. With any luck, this line should match in with that. And then we just want to go up here, line up all of that. Just like that. I'm going to turn that round because I keep going that way. How's that? Might make it a little bit easier. So this will be open there now. This will be open there. Even though this is going to fold this way. Yeah, I'm doing well, aren't I? That way. <laughs> 
Who was shouting that out? We're going there. Okay, scrap that whole last bit. That one's there. That one's there. That one's there. That's what we've got. I'm going to glue this again, and it's going to go there. Oh, my Lord. I am so sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want the brown of the original file folder on the outside. One, two, and three. Kylie, stop talking and just concentrate on what you are doing, young lady. All right. So now we're going to go there, lining it up, and down to there, lining that up with that line. There you go. And down to there. How's that? How's that? Doesn't that look better? <laughs> All right, give them a good push. This one is going to come up and go there. Just like that. Less haste, more speed, Kylie. Right, so this one you're going to go from, you'll see where the, I'm going to do it so that you can see. If I just put a pencil mark even. There is the fold line. There is the fold line. Because I don't know whether you can pick that up on the screen or not. So we're going to be gluing from that fold line up to here, that fold line up here, and that fold line up to there. Right. Just a thin bead of glue just to go up and into this one. Like so. And over to that one. So what should I call this? Is it a wallet or is it a mistake? <laughs> All right. That will go up there. That will go up there. Now's the time to see how your folding was before it's all completely glued. That is looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. Right. Just going to give all that a good push now. Oh, I like those ones on the inside, actually. I do. Right. So that is that. This one is going to fold up like that. That is the front of my file folder so that it'll tuck in to a pocket, okay? When we undo it, it's going to undo that way. And then I've got a pocket in there and a pocket in there. Yep. Right, so let's go our front. So as I said before, I had the nurse. I wanted her it to be her story this time. And she will fit on there beautifully. I like her. I also wanted not some, necessarily some lace, but some old, it's very old vintage, mm, kind of rusty looking cloth. It's not really a lace. I don't know what you'd call it. But I wanted that on with her as well for this one because I just thought she... It reminded me of the old bandages and stuff like that, even though it's embossed. So I wanted that on there with her. Now I want to go on to, let's have a look. Let's put one of our lovely colours that we've got in these going behind her. What do you reckon? So let's go. I really like this one. Let's take that down the centre. And to there. Like so. Alright. We'll see which one we go.
Technically, I could add the two together, couldn't I? So that it is a strip. All I need is something there which covers that join. So I'm really pleased that I didn't cut them in half. So we might do that. We butt you up to that one. So if I put my glue on first, my this thing, I'm doing really well. Sorry. <laughs> it's old age. Lovely words starting with M. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. Make sure this glue is working. Yes, it is. This is just my fabric glue and it's come out quite well so I don't think I'm going to need to put it through with my um, silicon brush. Mm. Alright, so I want that right on the end just so that it sticks over a little bit like so. Yep, no, I'm not going to need that one. I'll put that one away straight away. Like so. Yeah, I love this. I can't remember where I came across it, but I love it. That's what you get for not putting that back in the bin. Straight down there. Like that. A few back over there. And now I wanted... That one, that's going to go down there. So I'm going to trim that bit up there like that. And then I will trim the bottom section off down here. But I'm just looking at what else I want to put on there before I stick that bit. Yeah, I'm liking her on that. I am liking her on that. Right. So I'm thinking maybe we could go... What could we go? What could we go? What could we go? Let's have a think, Kylie. Put that away while you're thinking. Because <laughs> it helps. It does help the thinking. And if I go in here. What about one of my numbers? Those ones? Or do we go the longer ones? No, nope, you're shorter. Where are my ones that I cut up? There we go. All right. So, well, it's definitely not April 1975, is it? It could be 1919. And you will find with these ones that it's there in the greys and then it's there in the, in the pinks. It's there in the the greeny blues, etc. So it gives you different options for different colours that you want on there. So it could be either June the 30th, 1917 or May the 23rd, 1919. I'm thinking it's 1919. Right, colour-wise, do we go the pink? Oh, how about that? Because that'll pick up the green. We'll try it anyway. Um, I can always change it. Now this will go out, tucked in a little bit, I reckon, from the... Oh, I'm struggling, sorry. Um, this will get overlapped a little bit, so we'll have a look. We may need to trim it down a tad anyway. Right. So this is here. This is here. No, it may not. Do I want it out like that? To give this an even border around. I don't want it separate. I don't do not want it separate, so 
I even bought it. Her there. Yep. We'll go that way and give that an even border, I think. Just want a burnt edge going along there. Up across the top. The bottom I will put in once we've done that. The centre bit you probably won't see. So you probably won't see it, but I'm going to ink it anyway. Just because it's sort of All right. There we go. So that'll go straight down there like that. Beautiful. Like that. there, follow down that ribbon, give that a push, trim that bit off, and now I want that one sitting in there like that, just in there, beautiful, that'll do it, alright, so I'm just run some glue over that piece. You don't necessarily need to see the glue book while I'm doing it. Just so it's even pushed up against that. Right. So she can come on there now. Yeah, I like her on there. Quite like her on there. So, we are going to have to do the glue book. And I'm just going to go over her and then I'm going to pop some of my liquid glue around the sides. As she's on the front cover and she will get knocked about as she's going into pockets and things like that. So I'm just going to give it a quick run around just to give it that extra bit of stability and around that okay right i'm getting very glueified because i'm getting very glueified and because she's on that trim right that's her and i'm just going to push her gently i'm not running it right down because i don't want to catch that trim so we're just pushing as we go. Right. So that's our outside done. When we go on to the inside, what are we looking at? 43, beautiful. We want something along these. Now, what I did last time is that I had a stamp that I've had forever that's like a crackle stamp. There are numerous different crackle stamps out there. Um, so, you know, you'll find them all over the show. And I just gave this a little bit of a crackle to get a bit of a background going. And I've just used the grey so that it doesn't stand out too much, but it's just there. And I haven't used an acrylic block. I've just used my hands so that it's not a solid, solid image okay and I've already got stuff going on and all the rest so it doesn't need to be a solid image and I'm just going to push my hands lightly over and it'll give me that I'm going to turn it around because it has a more solid bit here and this time it's going to go that way so I'm just going to stamp up or ink up this top section to give it more of a crackled wallet look dried leather and all the rest Okay, like so. So I'm going to do exactly the same onto this side. Now this side already has all that trim and paper and all the rest. So, you know, if you wanted a true and perfect image, you would make sure that this was flat, flat with nothing else adhered onto it first. I don't want 
that type of image. I just want something that's old and worn and just slightly there. So again, I'm going to do the same and I'm going to flip it over so that I'm going to go that way this time. Again, just so it doesn't look like a true pattern. I'm going to just sit that one down there like that. Doesn't matter if it smears. There we go. Just to give me that sort of look. Right. So in here, I want to be able to pop her address. Now, she's going to be called the same as um, the other one that I did. Now, I have a stamped image from Witchcraft Do You Do from their actual stamp set. Clear stamps, it's got numbers and things like that. And it has this image. And I love this image because it gives me, more or less, it looks like an address. So I want to make something in here to tuck this into. I'm going to pop this aside for now. So what we're going to actually do go back to our freebie set okay and we're going to chop out one of these this inside piece all right because it makes a perfect I might as well go up to this one so I'm going to give it a little bit of a border and I'm just going to work my way around and trim this out down across and down here like so and then we can find all the areas that we've missed with the knife got that one got that one got that one and missed that one like so okay so what we've now got is our outside edge as such. What I want to do is cut an inner edge into it. So I'm going back to centimetres for this because I find centimetres works better for me for smaller areas. And I'm just going to line and mark a centimetre border all the way around. You won't see it. I'm doing it on the back so I don't have to worry about rubbing out pencil marks or anything else. This is the easiest way to do something like this. You can look, you can use a die if you've got a die that'll cut that out for you, all well and good, but otherwise, just measure around, give yourself an even border, and take your lines past each other. Because if you take your lines exactly where you're going and stop them there and there, when you've started cutting, it gets very hard to work out where you've got to stop, especially if you're using a blade or a trimmer with a little V-blade. Right. So that's that one. So what I've got is this section in the middle. So what we're going to do now is trim around that. So I'm going to go from this line down to that line. I'm going to go over here and then go from this line down to that line. Same with this bit. Down to that one. And then same down to this one. So that we actually cut out a little centre bit, like so. Okay. Now, that looks all well and good. We'll ink around the top edge. Give it just a, a smudge, I suppose, would be the best word for it and what I'm also going to do is ink in here because it's been catching dirt and grime for all these years so we want to make it look a bit authentic and the other thing I want to do with it is just add a grey here grey yeah it's just put a faux stitching line across there now if you want to you can actually go and stitch that but this paper is only copy paper it's fairly thin and I didn't want to run the risk of it catching so I'm 
just going to put a little fake line with my pen all the way around and back up there. So I've created my own stitching line without moving. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to put our little piece of acetate in there. So I have a little bag that's full of acetate cut off pieces. Of course you do, can't I? Some of them are the right size, some of them are not. I've got to have some thinner pieces. Here we go. That want to work? All right. Tuck you back there. Pop you over there. And this will work just fine in here. And it's just going to need to be trimmed off about there. So I've just put a little mark with my knife in there. And I'm just going to sit it on there and trim that straight up. I know you probably can't see that mark, but I can. It's all right. Don't fret. As long as one of us can see the mark, we're right. Right, so with my double-sided tape, I'm going to go around the centre of this. Ready to put my acetate onto, like so. Got my scissors caught, sorry. Now, in there. Now you could stitch around it with the acetate on there if you wanted to, depending on what your sewing machine is like. But again, I'd have to move around there and it's just too much hassle at the moment. Right. Peel those off. Time goes just so quick when I'm doing this, sorry. So much I want to show you and do and all the rest, but time's just disappearing. Right. Try and get that off your fingers. Oh, look, inky fingers. There's nothing like double-sided tape to show how inky your fingers are. Uh, that one's going to go down like... See what I mean? There we go. All right. That's that one. That one's going to go on there like that. Now, I'm going to use my double-sided tape again for this, just because I'm lazy, but it still works. And it'll hold the acetate down beautifully. But this time I'm taking it all the way to the bottom. Apart from the top, you don't want to put the double-sided tape, of course, at the top for your opening pocket. And then all we need to do... And I'm going to do that before I actually stick it down is you'll hold it to the light, work out where you need your little piece. Right, so that's all ready to go. And over here I've got, I don't know, just, but it's a different colour. I wanted something that was going to be a different colour. So you can see where I took the other piece out. Take away that blue. Like so. And we need a piece that's going to be, so here's my double-sided tape. It's not going to go past that bit. So it's going to be about one and a half inches. And I know, I'm sorry, I keep switching from centimetres to inches, don't I? All right, so that's about that. Like so. Put that one back over there. Take off my blue edges with that one as well. And I need this. So this one will fit in here like so. I don't want it too tight. 
So it needs to fit nicely in between the double-sided tape without actually going into the windowed area. So I'm thinking about that. Okay, that gives it room to move. We can trim a little bit more off it if we need to. So up against our grid, try and make it nice and straight. Down there. All right, that's my little piece to stamp. There's my stamp already. I'm going to grab that. Now, let's say we need to work out where this is going. I can trim a little bit more off that. I can, I can, I can, because I'm going to put a tab on it. But before I do that, what I need to do is work out, because this is higher up here than it is down there for that, I need to work out where I want to go. So I'm just going to turn it over so that I can see whereabouts the center is, which is about there. Okay, I'm going to turn that over again. Follow that pencil mark so that I can see exactly where I want to stamp. Because I need to be further down this way. Does that make sense? Because I've got double-sided tape down here, so it's not going to go past this bit. So I'm going to stamp down about there. Right. So I'm going to go with a darker colour this time. I'm going to go into the fallen leaves in my Versa. This a fine. Mm, if it'll undo, that'll help. So I'm going down there, about centred. Right, well, probably gone too far down there, Kylie. Let's have a look. Nope, that's a pretty good match. That's a pretty good match. Happy with that? Right. But it is a little bit too, too, too on the top. So we just need to take a little bit off the top. Wasn't much. And I want to put a tab on it. Okay. I want to rub out my pencil line at the back. I need to rub out my pencil line there. And what I want to do is just make this a little bit old. It's been pulled in and out of different wallets through the time or whatever else. So I've just given it some scrunches and now I'm just going to rub over those with, uh, what have I got? Brushed corduroy. Okay. So it just gives it that, that loved look as such. Okay. I'm going to go around the edges. like so. Now we need to make a tab. Let's make a tab out of a piece that we've got sitting here left over. So that works a treat. We're just going to stick that on there. We want to go to about that size. Down like that. Fairly straight. And that's just a little piece that we had sitting on the table. Right. We need to find a center point for that. And we need to put a little bit of glue on that one. So just a little bit of glue down here. So it comes out. There we go. Finding our centre point. So these two here are our centre ones. Fold that back out. Adhere that down. All right. Glue the other side. And she's all done. So... The only thing I want to show you is my little notebook. Um, you know how to fill with ephemera and all the rest. So that's that one. We can now adhere this one on. We've hit our air, sorry. Uh, right, that goes that way. That goes that way and it's going to sit in there. Nice and even. And that one will just slide down in that like so. Right, a little notebook. We're going back to our freebie sheet. We want these. Simple as that, okay? So what we're going to do 
is we're going to slice down there. And down there. Down there. And down there. There is another one that says notes down there that we could use, but that's fine. You'll get the gist of this one. All right. We're going to take those two. I don't necessarily, because it's a notebook, need seeds and whatever that says. And specimen. So, take that one. Trim that one off. Okay. Now, these ones, I need to trim the bottom. But I'm trimming it there. And then this bit, I'm just going to tear this word off. All right. And I'm going to tear this word off. And I've got these lovely little notebooks which go that way. So we'll do the same with this one. Taking it right down to the bottom of both of those. Tearing off seeds. That way. And seeds this way. I want to burn those edges as such, like that. like so grab those top them that way see how I've got all these wonderful little bits now they are going to be adhered there okay and to adhere them I'm going to actually put a staple in there Like so, sitting that in there, sitting that in there. I've got my stapler here, and I'm going to staple in between those lines, hopefully in the center, like that. Now, your staples tend to still do that. Um, I do tend to do that. So that's what that was, just to really flatten them so that they don't stick up too much when I go to stick it down. And in here now, I'm going back to my bits and bobs for these. And I will find one of these that fits where it says specimen. So I just want... Oh, see, maybe even new... Let's go there. I do love numbers. You can just do so much with them. It's just one of those amazing things, and there's so many wonderful numbers in all the witchcraft you do kits. So that should fit in there. And what I want to do with it is trim it a little bit smaller. I'm going to take off some edges down there. Take off that one. Like so, that should cover specimen, and I'm going to just trim it down to the seven, to the two, so that it fits in there like that over specimen. Beautiful. Give that a burnt edge as well. Down there. Okay. Glue that little bit down. Some glue on that. Right. It's all right. I was just looking for my tweezers. I found them. So that I can even over the specimen bit. That's about even. All right. See? Who said it said specimen? 
Right, back to our little folder. And this one, we'll get it here down like that. And we've made ourselves a little notebook. So again, I'm going to put a little bit of this And then the rest, I'm just going to fiddle with this that I've just realised I haven't actually put my lid on. So, let, oh no, here we go. I do it all the time. Maybe I need one of those little reminders. Have you put your lid on? All right. Let's put the lid on. And in like that. There we go. Now I had cut out a few little ones because that, as far as I'm concerned, may have been her bow. So we better put him in there. Memory sakes. So he'll go back here. He could have gone in there, couldn't he? You know, had the photo in there instead of her name. So, you know, we've got the photos, etc. Um, I won't finish doing all that because you've seen all that with that one. So if we turn that over, we've got her and she would as well. Now with her, I would probably put a little bit of lace or something on the top of that. We've got him. Now he is completed, of course, so you can see how much thicker he is than that one. And we've got his full name, we've got his notepad, we've got his bank statement, we've got his tickets, we've got photos of the family and the boys, and we've got some money, of course. So I hope you've liked those. It's, again, something different to do with your folios. And it's another way of looking at your kits. Look at your kits and look at the freebies and see what's in there that all match and mix together because most of them do complement each other. Okay, and so the kit, as I said before, the kit we've used is Vintage Bits and Pieces Set 2. And that's given us these guys, and it's given us all this and this and all our numbers and everything else. And our little folio and our notebooks have come from the freebie Botanical Identification Cards Set 1. Go in, have a look. Oh, 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 just remember, don't go yet, don't go yet. I've also, in the description down below, I'll have the link to their website. I'll tell you which ones I've used. But you will also get, if you go in and put my code in, that will be written in the description box. You'll need to go to the description box to get it because I can't remember it at the moment. <laughs> you will get 15% off any of their digitals not the other products in their store, please go through the rest of their store as well. It's awesome. But any of their digitals, you will get 15% off if you put my code in. Okay, so go to that description box underneath. Have a look for the code. It's all down there. And until next time, thanks. Bye.